Welcome to Dare to Dream and the new show of the day, the new show du jour. This is Debbie Dashinger. It's a pleasure to be with you. The show has been nominated for two People's Podcast Choice Awards, and I encourage you to subscribe to the show. It's available to you on a lot of different outlets. I'll just name a few because we're syndicated in over 40 of them. You can subscribe on Apple or Google Podcasts, as well as Spreaker, youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, because it's so much fun to see the people. So the fact that some of you are watching, or excuse me, listening on podcasts, but maybe you'd like to see what we all look like interacting, definitely go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. And thank you so much to everybody, and that's you, for posting your comments. I read them all. I appreciate them all. Sometimes I send them on to the guests. So thanks. Also, BBS Radio, Pandora, iHeartRadio, ta-da. So I want to talk a little bit about how interesting it is to make a contrary choice. Because I'm living in that space right now. And here's what I know. It's really uncomfortable, actually, where I am right now. Because my life has been going one direction. I feel a call, the call of the wild, to go a much deeper spiritual way in my life. And what I'm starting to see is that life is not supporting the other ways that I show up because it's really asking me to go way deep and way spiritual. And what I also know is, besides being uncomfortable and hearing the call of the wild, which is spirituality for me, and I like calling it that, is that I am making these really delicious choices for myself. And I'll give you an example that is contrary. I had an appointment with an amazing woman the other day. I knew she was amazing and she's an image stylist. And our appointment was that she come to my place, she go through my closet and specifically what she does is she shops in your own closet. So she takes what you already have and creates outfits out of them. And I had heard great things about her. This had been on the calendar for months, but I am going gangbusters right now. I'm launching all sorts of stuff. <laughs> And I'm exhausted, but I also need the capacity to finish launching things. So the thought was, I really should cancel this and put it off. But you know, the next concurrent thought was, I really should not cancel this because this is a day for me. And I have a firm belief that contrary action, my not working, my having fun, my being creative with another being actually creates for me, gives the universe the space and capacity to throw beautiful things into my life. So I gotta say, I had the most spectacular day with this woman, Bobby, and I now have 30 new outfits. I went to a wine event last night. This is one of them, by the way. You can't even see the awesome black velvet, crushed velvet pants that go with this or the boots, and she puts everything together. Went to a wine event last night, another contrary choice, when my computer went haywire because Microsoft has decided to make an upgrade that they actually haven't tested, by the way, so don't use the upgrade because it wiped out like half my computer. So I was in triage for five hours yesterday at a time when I really need that time. And right before I left for the wine event, contrary action, I said, I can't wait for Microsoft anymore to try to figure this out. I pressed the button to completely restore my computer back to how it was pre-upgrade and walked out, went to a wine event, had a spectacular night, came back at the end of the night and ta-da. <laughs> my computer completely worked again when it went back to from whence it was originally. So I just want you to look at your life and what kind of contrary action can you take that's for you, that allows the space and capacity and the gorgeous winds and arms of the universe to come in and take care of you. That's really what I'm all about. I think meditation is that, by the way, because we're always thinking about all the things we have to do, but when we stop and disconnect and do something that's really for us, for the stillness for the remembering that we are all that is and connected to all that is, that magnificent things can happen. So one of the things I'm doing tonight is I'm gonna take a look at some ideas for me to do to create a new, an upgraded 2.0 ritual that I do daily. I've had one, it's been lovely, but I'm ready for 2.0 because when you hear the call of the wild, when you hear spirituality go, come to me, you're mine. <laughs> Look in my eyes, you're mine, baby. And I feel it like big time. I need a new practice or an upgraded practice. So I'm going to be looking at future journaling 
you've not heard about that, I'll let you know how that goes because I feel I'll do some work there. And uh, definitely some practices, some beautiful practices, maybe even bump up the yoga that I do every week. So I'm, I'm offering all of this to you so that your mind, your, your being starts going to start to consider what's up for you and what's right and light and what seems logically like what you, you really need to be doing, but you know in your heart what you most desire to do and where your perfect alignment is instead. And to trust that alignment, to allow that to unfold and see where it takes you. Yum. So I have a great show for you today. And before I get into the show, I just wanna say thank you to Dr. Dean here for sponsoring this show. And thank you to Access Consciousness. You can find his amazing, powerful energy work anywhere in the world. His products, his books, everything. They've got online courses, live courses. You can become a facilitator. It's Dr. Dean here, H-E-E-R.com and accessconsciousness.com. They're amazing. And if you're different, DD, Debbie Dashinger, definitely different like me. It's a great outfit. So would you like to learn specifically how the universe is here for you in particular? I know I do. My guest today is Kathleen M. Whalen, and she's helped hundreds of thousands of people harness the power of Vedic astrology through conscious calendars, which is a coded color calendar, and it shows the power days of the year and has been downloaded in over 184 countries. She's also the developer of Astro Vantage, a comprehensive karmic guidance series that aligns purpose with opportunity. Through the power of Vedic astrology, Kathleen consults and guides teams of successive millionaires and works with those who are deeply on their spiritual path. Kathleen blends her BA in biochemistry, medicine, masters of acupuncture, and Chinese herbs, mantra, and Ayurveda into her work. She's the author of Correction, How Vedic Astrology Predicts the Market Instability of 2013, and the Little Book of Happiness, which is a companion to the Prosperity Mantra and Happiness Habit Experience. You can find out more about her at ConsciousCalendars.com. Kathleen, welcome to Dare to Dream. It is so great to have you. Oh, thank you so much, Debbie. You are incredible. <laughs> thank you. Well, right back at you, girlfriend. I mean, I had a reading with you last week. I'm still... I'm still in process uh, after experiencing that, I have to say. And I've told so many people, I've, so over the course of my career, I get a lot of swag and I've had many, many readings. And at some point, especially for me with astrology, it's like, yeah, yeah, you know, you can only hear about your character so much and it aligns and that's great. But I have to say, I feel like you deliver something that is so different. Like, I mean, obviously, you and I, it was like a, a total business strategy session on the one hand. On the other hand, I felt like you could see and perceive things I've never experienced someone to be able to do in a Vedic astrology reading. So I want to start there. I want to start that you can speak to what is that, that experience? What is it that you bring that is so unique and wholly different? Oh, Thank you so much, Debbie. You know, I really, I honestly feel that it's practicing the elements, the foundational elements of the system itself. It's a social science. And what ends up happening is I do think my background in biochemistry and being able to take three dimensional things and sort of spiral them up and combine them does help. And when someone honors the principles of Indian astrology embedded within it itself is the capacity to do more than just look at someone's capabilities and skills. There's a quality to it that is uh, weaving into strong suits, purpose, vibrational futures, near futures, mm -hmm. and the transits all come together. And that's really what I was doing, you know, in the session with you, is naming these things that just jump out as synergies, and it actually kind of sings. And that's what I'm reading in, in, in hearing, you could say. And saying uh, regular Sanskrit mantras, I do think helps. 
You mean you say them in your life? Yes, well, as like a vibrational preparation that creates kind of, you, you could say an opening, uh, a channel so that when I'm in a session for you, these other magical things can happen. So I'm reading the principles and something else can happen too. Wow, because I love this part in your bio that says, Astro Vantage Comprehensive Karmic Guidance. That yeah. align, I mean, this is like a powerful line, all of it, that aligns purpose with opportunity. What is that? Yum, yum. That is the bingo, right? Because in, it, when people speak of Vedic astrology, they often call it predictive. Hmm. Because there's someone's chart, which is the map of the sky at the moment of someone's birth. There's this really cool other thing, which has to do with, it's called a Dasha cycle, but it's a planetary cycle that lights up portions of consciousness and literally call us to be interested in different things, drawing us to different places on the planet or different activities. Like, I want to get a university degree now. It literally pulls this up in our consciousness. And then at the same time, there's this other thing of transits of like, ding, ding, ding. There's some big stuff coming down the pike right around the corner. And this opportunity mixed with where you are and everything you've either created in the last three years, five years, 20 years, three months, can combine with it. And all of that together is that combination of the karmic patterns, things you've cultivated in past lives and this lifetime, and the opportunities coming together to say big yes, when those combine. Hmm. So here you are, BA in biochemistry, like you're an overachiever. I think this is amazing medicine. Masters of acupuncture. Chinese herbs, mantras, Ayurveda, and this. I'd love to know how you got here, but I, but I also am clear in reading that, that this is all the soup of who you be right now. So talk about that. Mm. You know, I do feel in so many ways that the first three years of my life in Taiwan must have had some play in this beautiful thread that has been woven through my life. There's something about being able to understand nature and natural rhythms that has been with me my whole life. And to me, that's the thread that ties everything together. So yes, I mean, I got the BA in biochemistry because to me, looking at uh, a, a compound was like looking at trees blowing in the wind. Remember, you know, we're similar age. We didn't have 3D composites back in the day, right? Like we had to take, you know, two dimensional images and look at them. But when they finally came into being, looking at the things that make up our body, they, it's all nature. It's the microcosm, macrocosm. This thread is all woven throughout. So I chose biochemistry because I knew I was going to medical school. I went to medical school. I left medical school. And I was just going to jump through that hoop to get to Chinese medicine. And I already had a successful Chinese medicine practice. And when I came to Vedic astrology, I spent 50 to 75 hours on my own chart to understand that as much as I'm having, was having a very successful practice, if I continued in the same vein, I would likely make myself sick. Wow. And it was time to change. So I began that process, which was very difficult to let go, but very successful practice. People, and people still are like, can I refer people to you? You know, for the Chinese medicine, you know, because I can do the whole energy bit. Um, and so, yeah, it's been a very interesting process, but understanding nature and natural rhythm is the thread. It's the core of all of it. There is no difference to me. Mm. And you once organized talks for Pema children. I'd love to hear more about that. That was very early before she became known. Um, actually, I had uh, Tukten Chodron, uh, was one of my Tibetan Buddhist teachers. And Tukten Chodron actually has done incredible work for uh, Tibetan Buddhist nuns in creating um, nunneries and places that they can live and practice away from the public sphere. But while she was still living in public life, Pema Chodron, good friend of hers, you know, they went through teachings together. So Pema was coming through town and I was, you know, sort of a right-hand person helping out with little things. And so I found this beautiful art gallery and put it together and got to hang out with Pema children and be with her at two Dharma talks. 
And, you know, looking back, she hasn't changed at all. And she's just so beautifully available and genuine. And she was exactly that way then. Hmm. Wow. You have an amazing history. I mean, you've really traveled big time. <laughs> you made some big life choices. Is that in your chart too? Yeah, looking back, I can see some of those travels. Yes, but I was in Chinese medicine school, and and like you, just like you're you're speaking about, though, there are those feelings of working in the known sector of like this is a logical choice, and then there's that moment of the call of the wild, and I really think that there is such beauty, a symphony, in combining those two, because I was very clearly like, great, I'm finishing Chinese medicine. And I thought ahead. I knew that as soon as I finished my degree, I would jump into a practice and I would probably not be able to travel because I would be sort of tied to the responsibility of the practice. Yeah. So I made a choice between the second and third year of the master's program to do my internship in China early. And I, I don't even have in my bio, I, I'm in pictures, I got to meet the, the prime minister of China at one of the talks I went to, lots of things like that. But because I was in China and I was studying Tibetan Buddhism, I had friends who told me different ways to get to Lhasa. Uh -huh. And so while I was in West China, I took a trip to Tibet. And many people told me, oh, you're going to want to go straight to Nepal. Things are destroyed, all these things. This was back in 1993. And prior to that, I had had this magical book, a travel book. And I opened it, and the first page I went to was Mount Kailas, the center of four world religions. And I went, huh, I'm going to go there someday. And I took a colored pencil, and it said, there's two routes. There's one route that's only open between two monsoon seasons and is the rare route. And I went, oh, that's the way I'm going to go. <laughs> I put a little colored pencil, and I colored it, and it was a clockwise in the book. Five years later, I'm in Lhasa. Mm. Don't even, I'm not even planning on going on this trip. And I am offered for $100 to be taken to the base of Mount Kailas. I was late getting back to school by two weeks. It was magical. It was a life-changing journey. And that was after meeting the Karmampa twice in Serpu, India, uh, in Serpu, uh, Tibet. And how did that change you? I feel it affirmed many things, but the one piece that sticks with me is that when in the high desert, it is this complete template for truly seeing how the nature of the mind is reflected in our experience of our environment. So when I was in pain, I would notice angry thoughts come up and patterns. And when I was at peace, you know, it, it was just utter, utter bliss. And so this was a huge high contrast, you know, because we were hiking with a 70 pound pack, you know, all this sort of stuff. So there are all these metaphors, but those are the things that stick with me. And that is also one of the places that I experienced the magic of mantra. So will you share, can you share some mantras with us? Yeah, I'd be happy to. It sounds yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one that came through that trip which was through a different Tibetan Buddhist nun that I was traveling with, um, was the Tara mantra. Now Tara in this, in, in the mantra I'm about to give, it, this is actually the Buddhist tradition. And Tara in this tradition, uh, she actually quells fear and brings courage. Oh. And this was one of my first mantras. And now we don't use mantra to manipulate our environment, but it just so happens that, <laughs> If you're having issues and things are kind of in the way or you're late or like you got to get somewhere fast, mm -hmm. um, doing the Tara mantra clears obstacles. It's sort of like Ganesha in the Indian panth pantheon. But Tara, this Tara, the green Tara mantra, which is she's sort of the patron saint of Lhasa, you could say, is that she quells fear, elicits courage of all mm -hmm. sorts and also clears obstacles. And when I say this practice a little bit longer, rainbows come out. <laughs> okay. I, I'll opt for unicorns, but you know, 
Yeah. I'm a believer too. So <laughs> this is beautiful. <laughs> wow. So just to reiterate, and that is the spelling T A R A? That is Tara. Tara, the mantra clears issues, quells fear, and elicits courage. Yeah. And I'm going to actually give everyone a secret extra sound, which is part of my practice. And I will be using the Tibetan pronunciation, not the Sanskrit pronunciation. So when we say the mantra, it's actually Om Tare, Tu Tare, Tu Tara, Soha. Very simple. And so the Tara becomes Tare in the mantra. Om Tare, Tu Tara, Tu Chure, Soha. I've added an extra syllable in there that actually captures energy and sort of amplifies it. And I find that very, very powerful for me. Om Tare, Tu Tara, Tu Tare, Soha. Om Tare, Tu Tara, Tu Chure, Soha. I think I might've said a wrong syllable the first time. So the second and third time is correct. Beautiful. And how do we do this? How do you do it? Ah, you can say it silently, out loud. It's wonderful to do to say this mantra in threes or nines. Many people say it in an entire 108 rosary or mala. Hmm. Um, but I, I personally find the power of threes and nines. Okay. Will you give us an example? I love, even if you have a mala or not, but just get, I love to experience you and the vibration you can create during this interview. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. To just say it three or nine times. Please. Yeah. Om Tara. I say her name first. Om Tare Tu Tara Tu Chure Soha. Om Tare Tu Tara Tu Chure Soha. Om Tare Tu Tara Tu Chure Soha. Om Tara Tu Tare Tu Chure Soha. That's so beautiful. Mm. That has such a resonance, Mamma Mia. Well, we're gonna take a very quick break because that's so yummy. I want you to be in that before we come back. My question is, what do you dare to dream? I interview very successful thought leaders who are doing great work out in the world. And if you knew you couldn't fail, if you knew you had the wings to fly, what would you do? That's why this show is created. It is for you to support you. And if you would like to be part of this Dare to Dream team, please support us by making a donation. For a dollar or more, go to patreon.com slash Dare to Dream and make a contribution to help this show be, be as big and awesome and even bigger and more awesome than it is. And I will continue to find better ways to support you in your life to create your dreams. That's patreon.com slash dare to dream. And if you're just tuning in after we've started, I'm interviewing the amazing Kathleen Whalen. She is a Vedic astrologer and she offers conscious calendars and astro vantage. And we're going to find out more about her work. You can find her at consciouscalendars.com. Kathleen, I want to ask you about the kind of things that people can receive working for you. So I know I had a session. I know we have a follow-up session that I'm already looking forward to. But I, I can tell by what I'm reading, you offer a lot more. So just so I'm clear, all of what's possible with you, will you talk about that? I'd be happy to. So the Astro Vantage experience is really, I feel, the, the, the prime nugget to experience 
as much of the basics of what Vedic astrology can bring. And with that, that's four sessions over the course of a year. Of course, if someone would want to, they could shorten that. But that actually allows me to bring both a one and two year view for planning purposes, perspective of you know the past, and to bring in all those other goodies that you maybe were reading about, which is you know sometimes a flower essence recommendation. It there's also uh, gemstones, and in the Vedic system, gemstones are used very differently than many people might have experienced in the what I'll call the retail chakra support system, in that the gems are extremely high quality. There's affordable ones. They're extremely high quality. And the, the thing I'll tell everyone is, whatever gemstone you get, it is far better to get something you can afford without specs or marks in them, even though in your local gem shop, they'll go, ooh, it's root related. It's really cool. You've got um, exclusions. <laughs> yeah, but I just want to drop this little, like, because I love to give universal advice. Like, if you can't have a session with me, you know, let's be useful. So, um, <laughs> Uh, and so the gems are aligned with the planets. And that actually, contrary to logical belief might be, it doesn't bring the forces in. It actually counters negative forces that might be blocking us or pushing us to one direction more than another. And taking that pressure off then actually allows health to flourish. There's gemstones for wealth, for children, family, education, things like that. And it's all aligned specifically with each person's chart. So all of those things get to be experienced in an Astro Vantage uh, series of sessions. And the big, the super bonus, is that I have this whole conscious calendar system that then anyone who has the Astro Vantage package, they actually get what all of my annual subscribers have been begging me for, is that they will get a year of conscious calendars bundled in a PDF, easy to read, every single month. So by the end of the 12th month, you actually have two years of view. Now, I know your calendars are color-coded. You've got purple, green, red. Can you explain that? Yeah. I mean, at the forefront, it's just like many people who have, you know, say an Apple computer or have ever driven, green means go, yellow means caution or be aware, and red is stop, but it's actually be quiet, self-nourish, go to the spa, journal, <laughs> be quiet, maybe don't be so social. And that, that's really the core is the green, yellow, red. And then additionally, we have purple, which brings in, uh, which are days where there might be more blockages or we might be bumping up against our stuff or sadness. And it's often a message to go, yeah, wait, maybe it's okay. So there's information in every single kind of color day. Ah, oh, that's so good. You know, yeah, I'm having some purple. <laughs> <laughs> Without a doubt, you know, I, I thrive on being social. I really do. And I, I also feel very held because of the people in my life, right? Major love and contribution and... And even tonight, you know, my best friend wanted to get together. First we tried for a movie and then we were, you know, let's go to like one of our favorite places to hang out. And I just could feel so deeply in me. I done, cooked, cannot love her to the moon and back. And I really want to create my practices. Mm -hmm. Like I feel so called to be in alignment that if I, you know, life is so fast, right? It goes quickly and to harness time especially when something's up and it feels ripe to sit down and really allow the expansion of what is right in life here what needs to be in play what does that look like recipes for me are everything because mm. I'm not a recipe girl right so like I'm so unstructured that for me to have structure or some modicum of discipline is ma creates massive success for me yeah, because you have this incredible ability to listen and and uh, observe, right? I, I mean, I feel like that's what makes you so incredible at the work that you do with visibility with people, because I you have this ability to listen into yourself and observe sort of vibrational information, be it the colors people are wearing or how they're looking, and 
I, I completely understand because I'm a creative myself. So I like just enough structure to then have that sounding board to go, yeah, is this true for me? Right. That's the basis of everything in spiritual tradition is we are asked to test it. We're asked to say, is this true for me? Mm, that's deep. You know, um, and, and oh, I have two places I want to jump, but I'm going to go here first because I thought this was really interesting in what you offer. You also offer stuff about what I'm talking about. This is outside of the flower essences and the gems, which you gave me some information. And I, I actually pulled up a great picture of a beautiful gold, because I'm a gold girl, gold ring with this monster pearl. It has to be a monster ring for me. So I found something and I'm just, I put it aside um, for when extra money comes in and it's, I'm so excited about it. It's one of the sites you recommended. You also talk about ways we can meditate as well as what we can do for our personal body type. I really wanna dive into both of those because they're, so, uh, they're so compelling and very important for those of us walking around in this body suit. <laughs> man, oh man, oh man, right? Yeah, uh, let's just talk, I mean, they're really the same thing. Mm. Sort of exercise, meditation, when looking at someone's chart, and this is what a good Ayurvedic practitioner can do when they listen to the pulse, but what's so beautiful is when we look at the chart, we can actually see what works for you now. I think we all have experienced like, oh, I had a jam and I was meditating great then, or, ooh, I worked out really great there, I had a routine. But what happens is with the planetary cycles and what lights up in our consciousness, two things are happening. There is what's natural to our body and body type. Some people, you know, are going to go a little mental, you know, thoughts much faster. And for that body type, creating something, there are literally asanas or poses that can be done. We're talking one, two, that create instant grounding. There's even, even different breathing practices. And again, we're talking nothing fancy, just like ah, beats that breaths are held. And so by looking at consciousness, we can, I can create a custom uh, experience that is matched with the body and mind type. In addition, understanding the conditions of this month, of the next six months, hey, you're probably going you know, to be a little more on your jam and walk every day here, or let's make sure you're walking here because the, the energy will be heavy. Or, and, and so we can create custom experiences on a month by month, three month, six month basis that is always matched with the body mind type because not the same kind of meditation is right for everyone. Not it's like a pitta, pitta vidha. Sorry if I'm saying it wrong. Yeah. Uh, kind of thing when you but, say vidha. Vata, pitta kappa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> remember that like the doshas and the word dosha actually is naming the imbalance. Mm -hmm. So I actually always like to use the positive vibrational quality and so when these practices are employed you're actually increasing vitality or prana or chi and you're increasing tejas or focused fire and ojas which is the juiciness of life hmm. <laughs> and so what and what am i is that in my chart would you even yes. know? ooh i don't almost have to to relook what we do know is that the what's so interesting is that some of your tendencies are to have some of that vata, you know, like a little bit of getting spun out, either, you know, by technology and life, because you have uh, the ability to understand information mm. so well. But your core thing is ojas. Like you are all about the juice. You actually understand the quality of the joy of life, the magic of life, all of that, that is in every fiber of your being. And you bring that to everything you do, an event, how you reflect it back to clients, whether you're helping them with a book or in a session, like that's that core because you have a, a connected sense. You have a sense of being connected to the universe at all times. And that gives a grounding and that juiciness of life that you come from that and seek it as well, because you know it's a natural fruit of being. Wow, thank you. Those are gorgeous words. And so for somebody who is in that flow of magic and connection and all that is and other people, what is is there an exercise that's better for my constitution? Mm. 
Yes. I mean, the, the two images I immediately got, I'm not even thinking of your chart. I just have the impression of having worked with you is um, actually being in the center of a room and spinning just a little bit, possibly moving the low back a little, and then sitting and sitting upright first, cross-legged. But then there is um, something that when you are sitting cross-legged, if you move the body with the back straight and the neck in alignment with it and bend straight forward as far as you can, and then you pause and you breathe in, hold your breath then and feel the energy in your low back, the, the held breath, we're talking one second or half a breath, and then you release that. And then you take another inhale and maybe move forward a little bit more. And it's a straight back, but there's, you know, there's movement. And slowly by doing that, as you move forward, this actually opens the low back, but it's actually a, an antidote to vata. So in the fall and winter, the energy is in general vata. But for you, as vata is reduced, this will ground you very deeply. But first we have to have movement and opening to the magic of life. So you spin first and then you move a little in your low back and then you sit down and in the bending, then you can sit and boof, you will be anchored. Mm, I'm going to try that. That's awesome. <laughs> Is that what you were meaning? <laughs> well, I mean, it wasn't, but I'm honestly, I was thinking you would say, yeah, you know, do body pump or take yoga or, you know, Pilates or da da da. Oh, no, it's got to be unique for everybody, honey. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? Like you're, you're not kidding your own unique um, exercise for your body type. That's fantastic. And of course, I do have stuff in my lower back, PS, shocker. So yeah, that's a beautiful practice. And I do love this sense of being so open to start with. That feels really good. Yeah. You know, I want to tell you, funny enough, on uh, last Saturday, I was invited to a costume party. And the invitation said, come as you from another alternate reality. Ooh. So my boyfriend immediately, like he got a download. He was so excited. He knew he was going to do his hair. He went out and bought the silver outfit. He bought silver makeup. He, you know, brought his, put his hair. He has a lot of hair, which is great. He put his hair up in a sort of a cone and sprayed it silver. I mean, man, he looks so good. And I thought, oh, I'll be you, but in gold, right? but I couldn't find a gold outfit. Well, instead I was about to leave a store and I saw a tutu and I've never owned a tutu. I was so excited. I bought a big poofy tool orange and pink tutu and a black top, a gold lame to go over it, you know, giant platforms with flowers on them and a little orange hat off to the side. So I, my costume created actually the character because I ended up being just that of a Dr. Seuss novel. It was so perfect. We go to this party and the first person we run into has, has this beautiful costume and then he's got little markings on his forehead. And I said, that is so cool. Who are you? He said, I'm Rahu. <gasps> and I said, I have to tell you, <sighs> if I had met you on Monday and you said, I'm Rahu, I would have walked away like, that's nice and not known who the heck you were talking about. But I just had this amazing Vedic astrology session with Kathleen Whalen, and I actually know who you are and the characteristics you be. And we had this amazing conversation. Wow, that is so cool. <laughs> so tell people about that, because that was, that was so interesting. Mm, about Rahu. About Rahu. Mm, yeah. Good question, honey. Oof. <laughs> um, all right. So... So Rahu, just when Rahu is mentioned, usually K2 is mentioned. So these two energies are simply the names. If for people who know Western astrology, it's called North and South Node. So these are actually invisible marks in the sky that exist at the time of your birth, and they exist right now. And those marks are, I always point to the sky. So imagine some invisible mark that says, oh, somewhere in the next month or two, somewhere in the next six months, the sun, moon, and earth will align and there will be an eclipse. And that invisible mark in the sky is that alignment. It becomes an energetically charged place in our solar system or around earth for us. Then for 18 months, that's a charged place for everybody. 
And if it's significant in your chart, that's when life gets a churning. And when the churning occurs, we often see it as, you know, life events, things we don't like, things that are poking us in the side, things that annoy us, obsessions. Sometimes you'll see people being pulled into the world, work, 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 obsessed with uh, how much they're making or making changes or redoing their home. And it appears to be an external pull. But Rahu, the sneaky part, is that even though Rahu is about our interface with the world and where we're being pulled into the world or annoyed by the world events around us, mm. this ends up being a place that catapults us on our spiritual path. Because if we can find peace in the name of that, that thing, the obsession, the mm. irritation, we are catapulted on our spiritual path and we are reversing patterns at an exponential rate wow can i ask where you, do you have rahu in your chart everybody does okay yeah. everybody has a rahu yeah, yeah everybody because every six months there are eclipses they're called the mega red days in the conscious calendar system you know before everybody was talking about the eclipses remember i designed the system over 10 years ago so it wasn't like as commonly spoken about of like, Ooh, what are you doing on the eclipse? So <laughs> the eclipses occur every six months, like clockwork. Okay. There are not total solar eclipses every one. There's partial lunar and partial solar, but every six months. And so there's a theme in everyone's life for 18 months. Mm -hmm. And that theme is the stirring in our life. Now, if that is not stirring a place where we have some, what are called natal planets or something in our birth chart, it's like, ah, your neighbor's having a hard time. Friends are having a hard time. Ah, there's like a little something at work, but it's not a big deal. So sometimes we get a reprieve for about 18 months. And then there are other times where like, we're in it, our partner's in it, our friends are in it, our job is in it. Like there's change everywhere. We're being challenged everywhere. And you just got to keep rising to the occasion. And guess what? All that stuff is the stuff of life that when we look back, those are our important rites of passage. The move or the children or the career change, like that's the stuff of life, people. We wouldn't not want that, even though it's uncomfortable to the theme of the day. <laughs> yeah, because therein lies change and change is often actually very good. Very good, exactly. Being comfortable is mm, yeah nothing happens <laughs> and so what do you see coming up for our planet what's mm. going to be coming up over you know i don't know if this is too big a question over the next year but just some general patterns that you might be aware of anything regarding uh, you know, country or politics, anything regarding wealth or romance or anything karmically or health wise, I am super open to learn from you what your perception and your brilliance shows is going to be happening. Well, what I'll do is I'll weave together a few things. I very often, I apologize, I'm used to speaking globally, but I, I do know the US chart so well that I very often speak from the point of view of the US chart, cool. which does affect global markets. So one of the things is that's so interesting is that uh, over a year ago, I was talking about the golden zone. The golden zone is when all these like hmm, powerful planets, Venus, Jupiter, uh, Mercury, are in great places. And all I know is I call it the golden zone and it's sort of like good stuff happens. Well, we have had the golden zone through pretty much the first week of November. And lo and behold, the US market's been doing pretty well, even despite the trade wars. Now, yes, the economists out there know that we just dumped a bunch of money in the economy <laughs> the other day. And the thing that, that is true is that Jupiter and Saturn set these larger goal, global patterns. Mm -hmm. Jupiter sets usually a rhythm for a year and Saturn sets a rhythm for two and a half years. There's something significant that has occurred right recently that is combining tumult and change, ah. a change in what you could say world systems, but not in a revolutionary kind of way, but rather in a finance and work way. It's no surprise that, you know, work is not what it used to be. And more and more people are moving to technology. Yeah. Seth Godin has said for years that most 
average workers will be working two to three jobs and they will be service-based industries mm. in technology or using technology of some form. Mm. This is definitely been the trend for the last two and a half years because Saturn and K2 are in Sagittarius. This is in the Vedic system. The constellations sound a little different. And in the end of January, this theme for the next two and a half years is shifting. Ah. And that is shifting in a way that during 2020, there's an overlap of a pattern that existed when Obama was born. Saturn and Jupiter in Capricorn are coming later in 2020. This translates to be two different things. Yeah. So a lot of people, you know, my sister was born the same year as Obama. Exactly. Saturn and Jupiter are coming together into Capricorn. And what this does is this actually brings a full circle to um, not tapping out, but reinventing what and how petroleum will be used. Mm. It, it will affect the U.S. economy. The U.S. economy will likely, the GDP will probably stabilize and decrease a little bit for various reasons, but I just read the planets. And so, uh, and so that will be the case for probably two and a half years, but Saturn moves slowly. So we won't see the effect in the economy probably until uh, middle of 2020, which is when the eclipses are. And at the same time, there is temporary protection because Jupiter will come in. So uh, people who are in small businesses, actually, ironically enough, will be a little buffered for a little longer. Uh, that's a sector that will be a little safer. Now, I, of course, jumped to economy a bit. But at the same time, I really love bringing it back to what I was talking about, which is how work changes for everyone. This is a huge global change. This is going to alter for every single person. And we will also see a division where, as we suspect, there will be plenty of people who are like, yeah, I want the unplugged way to work. Because with all of these planets in an Earth sign, there are going to be plenty of people to say, I'm going off grid, I wanna do work off grid, and then they may hand those products, those ways of life, those experiences off to people who have technology to go, hey, everybody, come over here, go have an event that's off grid. Go have an experience and reconnect with uh, not being dialed in. So I think we'll see a division, but they will actually still speak with each other and can support each other. So if you, you know, so for people who've been called to kind of unplug versus the ones that, you know, are like, hey, this is a whole new industry. <laughs> is that, <laughs> I just kind of riffed a little bit. But. but I have to ask you because you, you piqued my interest when you started talking about Obama and this cycle coming back because that's an election. So what do you perceive is going to happen? Is, do we have any? I have to be honest. I, for my Something own good. Sanity, for my own sanity, yeah. uh, <laughs> have not looked really closely. Mm. I will wait until we have the absolute front runners okay. before yeah. I take a look at those. Mm. But what we can say is that, you know, I have some colleagues who actually had thought that, that things would already have changed in relation to the current um, uh, impeachment. Sorry. Yes. Uh, yeah. And, and that there would have been even bigger things coming down the pike. So um, mm -hmm. what I can say is the return to basics and helping middle class workers, whoever can speak to that sector, especially because the economy is going to stabilize and start to go down, whoever can speak to that sector mm -hmm. is going to be the one who wins. And we cannot forget that the nation's chart was built on, quite frankly, agriculture and subsidies for agriculture. So this is at the key to the whole piece mm. is it, and the change of the job market. That is the cincher. Okay. I feel a glimmer of hope and light. Thank you very much. I needed that because I was watching the news today and it's just... Yeah, back to my happy place. Go to your happy place. Right. That's right. Yes. Where we live. <laughs> so, folks, 
exclusively for you. Anybody who is interested in being interviewed, we're taking a quick break here, and you are ready to get your message out into the world in a really big way so your tribe can find you, people can understand what it is that you do, who you do it for, who you stand for, and how you stand out, come to the Ultimate Visibility Formula. You are clearly my tribe because you're who I attract. And you can go to debbyd.net slash visibility. It's D-E-B-B-I-D dot net slash visibility. And there within six weeks, you are going to learn the entire system of how to submit yourself for radio and podcasts, how to get a hell yes, and then exactly what to supply them, how to be exquisite because you will be coached on how to be interviewed, and then what to do after. How do you develop relationships with influencers and how to repurpose your interview and how to get an ROI? Most people are looking for that who have already been interviewed, but how do I actually get results? Let me show you how. Go to debbyd.net. You're live with me, so I help coach you and get you so savvy and exquisite by the time you get out there and you will be interviewed during the class wd.net slash visibility. I'm speaking with Kathleen Whalen. We're coming here to the end. You can find out more about her at consciouscalendars.com. This is Dare to Dream, Kathleen. What are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Mm. One of my core pieces that I love to contribute to are trees, mm. the trees of the ocean, which is kelp, hmm. and helping women and children be educated. That is the root of peace in the world. Hmm. Those places are where I'm actually working behind the scenes in creating some new um, ways that I teach math to children through visuals, and then using those proceeds to contribute to educating women and children that are not normally educated to cultivate world peace. Is there a place where people can go to support you in that? I have not created it yet. <laughs> and so I'll let you know, yeah. uh, but in essence, I'll be letting my entire community know as I launch that. So anyone who's on the consciouscalendars.com mailing list, I will let people know because it is so powerful to support women and children that then supports men, right? This isn't just, women and children centric. It's just that by supporting them, we can create world peace and support everyone on the planet. Mm. And what do you want to say to the listeners here at the end, Kathleen? Whenever in doubt, make tea or step outside and connect with nature. Oh my God, that was so beautiful. Whenever in doubt, make tea or step outside and be in nature. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Oh, thank you, Debbie. I'm so glad to know you. I really am. You're exquisite. <laughs> mm. Folks, you can subscribe to the Dare to Dream podcast to receive your number one transformation conversation. Just go to any of the sites you're already on listening to or watching this. Just click subscribe. And it's so easy. It comes right in your box. I promise you, every week is another masterclass. And also, please leave us a review so other people who love this kind of conversation can find the show. Again, if you would like to be interviewed and you're ready to rock and roll your message out into the world, and hey, if you don't know your message, I teach you how to do that too, go to debbyd.net slash visibility. And remember, the secret of success always, always is having the courage to begin in the first place. Mm.